one and go. Wait, okay. All right, so um, welcome guys to uh, our live stream of um, RK77. Um, is this a prime number? Hmm. No, no, definitely not. It's, it's, it's not... a number divisible by both seven and 11. Oh yeah, oh damn, 11 okay. 11 is easy to identify, 11 yeah. is like... But do you know how to identify 11 after a second, uh, two digit numbers? Um, I remember like it has a mountain, is it like? Uh, one, two, three, two, one, something like that. Oh, Why that's a wrong? three digit one. That's a three digit version. Well, well, the mountain is a good way to perceive this, but uh okay, so the trick is if you add all the odd digits and add all the even digits, and if they equal, it's divisible by eleven. So oh, wow. one, two, one, the odd digits are one and one, and the even digit is two. So <clears throat> one plus one is two, then that's equal. Then for any arbitrary digit, number of digits, uh, if you add all the odd digits and add all the even digits and they match, it's divisible by 11. It's a simple oh. proof. You can try to prove it by yourself, but okay, this is actually <laughs> not planned. <laughs> um, yeah, but hey, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's knowledgeable. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, so um, um, today, yeah, <laughs> We uh, I have something to share uh, to to discuss uh, with you guys. Uh, it's more of like an observation um, that I've seen um, actually with my colleague uh, Maxis. Um, so we have faced this uh, issue, um, and I think it's kind of uh, surprising. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll show show it uh, to you guys uh, together with uh, Gawit. So down here, um, I have my uh, we have a Git repo, right? The Git repo is. Um, it has only one file. Uh, it's called text.txt. Um, I has uh, filled it to with um, four lines. Uh, one in the first line, two in the second line, three in the third line, and empty space in the fourth line. Right. So um, I have a branch um, that changes the first line to, to something else. So I have put it into like uh, one point one. Right. I have the second branch that changes. The second line into something else, right? So it only changes its own line, right? And and so on. So I have the third one and I have uh, the fourth one, right? So um, when we do a merge, um, we only change the the files in between uh, that they are being changed, right? The lines that are being changed, right? So for example, if I merge um, test one, um, I will see that. Um, the, the first line is changed, right? Mm -hmm. So I have emerged my first uh, first branch. Um, so if I were to now merge my second branch, um, Wait, right, so the second just, line is changed, right? Okay, so you just reset the previous merge and then yes. you merge the second one. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So so. Merging them one by one is fine, right? So, so what mm -hmm. happens if I if I were to change the, the first line, right? Um, and then merge it. So I've merged um, the branch test two, which edits the second line. Um, so now mm -hmm. I'm gonna merge the first uh, the first branch test one, which edits the okay. first line. So it's a problem whether or not we will face a merge conflict. Yeah, correct. So okay. So what's the explanation? Should we? I think. Oh, I, I think we, sh we shouldn't, oops, <laughs> I pressed the button too early. <laughs> um, I, I think we, we shouldn't um, because we are kind of like only editing the first line, right? Um, yeah, so that one is editing the first line and the, the second one is editing the second line. So by right, they're editing different lines. Therefore, there right. should not be a word conflict. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's take a look at uh, what, what, what's a conflict, right? Oh. So somehow, when I uh, merge the uh, branch uh, test two, um, it changes somehow changes uh, says that there is a conflict on line one, but mm -hmm. I've only changed the second um, uh, the second line, right? So let's see. Uh, actually, it should be right. So yeah. this is my previous merge. I've only changed this second line, right? 
Yeah, okay, so it looks like instead of treating the change as separate line, it's treating the changes from the first branch and the second branch in one block. Yeah, so I, I don't really know why. <laughs> Um, so somehow, like the line before and the line after is is somewhat affected. So even if uh, okay. in, we, we change the only the second line, somehow the first line is also somewhat marked as uh, changed, and the and the next line after that is also marked as changed, right? So so let us let's, let's see, right? Um, uh, what happens okay. if we merge um, uh, our edits in the first line and our edits in the third line? Right? Oh okay. Sure. So um, I'm now at my head where there is nothing there. Um, yeah. Right. So it's my initial commit with uh, nothing over there. Right. So yeah. let's um, let's test one. And test number three. Right. And it oh. works. Right. It, it works, right? Because Wow. The first line changed and the third line changed and there is no merge conflict, right? <laughs> but but if I have um, too much uh, or, or many merge which edits the adjacent lines, somehow there is a merge conflict uh, going on in there. Like, what's, what's happening? Um, yeah, so so this kind of like baffled uh, uh, me and my my, uh, my colleague Maxis uh, for a while. <laughs> and, and then we set up like this model experiment and then and then, yeah, we're just very confused, right? So I think um, that actually explains some of my previous, like, uh, confusions. Why, like, we're actually changing different parts of the file, but that actually results in a, in a merge conflict. Because like, if the, if somehow your, if the differences are connected, connects to one block, then, then it treats it as like, a merge conflict. Mm -hmm. But I don't know Git internals. Maybe it's time to look into Git internals. Yeah. To... Yeah. Mm. yeah. So yeah, I I have a theory that like maybe it's like taking um the line before and the line after as uh, anchors. Um so when it tries to uh, resolve the merge conflict, it actually looks for the line before and then um and then the line at the end. Uh the line immediately after your changes and then tries to like find uh, what's in the middle and then uh changes that. So so this might actually result in this might actually explain why we have a merge conflict, right? So yeah. Mm. So now it's actually not the end of the experiment. Uh so I have uh, one more experiment. Um so we have merged uh, uh branch one <laughs> and branch three together, right? So mm. what happens if I try to merge? branch two, right? So we get a merge conflict um, as expected, right? And it's complaining that um, I've kind of just changed everything, <laughs> the line before and the oh. line after, like, even though I have not, right? So yeah, like what oh. Gawe said, um, maybe it's time for uh, another uh, git good, uh, git good number three. Um, so somebody else would have to carry the torch um, from Li Hao. Okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, uh, we, shall we get started? Um, actually, we shall, but there is an issue. So from our chat, I learned that we are a bit lagging. So uh, please, please allow us to take some time to resolve this issue. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think, let me let me put us on hold and I'll set up another laptop for the recording so that we no longer lag. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry for this, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get this out of us in a few minutes. Please, please have a uh, coffee break. See you guys.
All right, thank you guys for waiting. Um, before we actually get started, um, we would like to do a little bit of testing to see whether we have uh, gotten the technical issues straightened out. Um, so I'm gonna be um, trying to think of something to talk about. Um, do let us know on the chat um, below or on the site, um, whether like everything is good. Are we still having um, 0 0.3 FPS or is the sound good? Um, please do let us know. Um, we do actually see uh, quite a number of uh, uh, senpais and, and teachers here. Um, yeah, and a couple of uh, jokes running in and out. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. But it's no longer lagging, completely lagging, right? Mm. So, okay. Um, okay, I think we are getting some, uh, some frame rates, but uh, the resolution is still a little bit low. Um, let's see if we can work on something about that. Um, I think, I think, I think it's okay. I think we can continue. All right. Yeah. So, um, thanks, yep. Thanks guys. Um, so let's carry on and see, um, we can tie this through or not. All right. So, um, again, welcome to RK Originals on number 77th. Um, as we have discussed earlier, 77 is not a prime number. It's actually a, a number that's divided by 11. And, and Gawai just shared with, um, shared with me, shared with us, a little trick on how to know whether a number is uh, divisible by 11 or not. All right. so um, shout outs to Shopping for our, our help uh, providing us equipment to host and engineers uh, for helping us uh, uh, and giving us guidance on like, how to host. Right, um, our COCs, uh, please do not record um, our live streaming. Please do not post advertisement in the live chat and please say nice things to each other. So um, Singapore CSS is uh, looking for speakers. Uh, do reach out to them um, if you have something to talk about. And if you would like to talk about um, something on this platform, RK, um, do reach out to me or Kaui or simply visit this link. All right, so our first, um, speaker uh, has previously shared with us uh, various things from diving to coding. Um, today, she'll be sharing with us on parses, um, somewhat related to a talk last week. So please welcome Jenny G. Jenny, please. Yeah, I think Ken needs to stop sharing. Okay, we're seeing it. Um, is everything okay? Yep. All right, cool. Hello, guys. Uh, my name is Jenny. I'm a web front end developer from Shopee ISAP team. So as you see, I'm also a scuba diver. So if you are interested in talking with me about uh, diving or technology, uh, you can follow my Twitter account here. All right. So today I'm going to try something new to me, which is talking about a algorithm. It's called early, early parser. So hope you still remember last week, uh, Adrian shared about a toy browser he made um, very awesome talk. So there's a very, very important part in his code, which is uh, passing uh, HTML. And he's using a very typical LR parser. So 
when we are talking about LR parser, I would like to explain a little bit more about it. So uh, it will look like this. So uh, in the LR parser, you will usually take in some uh, text and let Lexer to recognize the different parts of this text, like the variables, symbols, uh, the numbers here. And then the parser will use the, uh, use the lexer to help organize these parts into a proper grammar tree, uh, just like the AST I talked about. So a typical uh, lexer, or you can call it tokenizer, often look like this. It's basically a, a state machine, and it outputs some uh, YouTube functions, YouTube functions, to operate the states like uh, the offset, a line, and some other flags. And then parser will use these uh, YouTube uh, functions to run a big loop, to run a big loop. And in this loop, it will use the uh, token get from the tokenizer to see whether there is any, any keyword it, it can recognize such as the function in our code, right? And if it see uh, your code has a function started, then it will probably pass over to another uh, sub function and let this sub function to carry on uh, the rest of the code. And in this sub function, it will also run this uh, uh, state machine to operate the cursor and to organize the content of the function into a proper AST. Yeah, then I see there are some problem with uh, this kind of parser, which is, well, the grammar is highly coupled in the code. Basically the grammar is inside the code. And then it brings out, uh, turns out that you write a very long code and it only serves one language, right? And then, because you are writing a very big uh, loop with a lot of code, it turns out to be very hard to debug and maintain. So one case I met is um, um, it can it can turn wrong uh, because of one operation is wrong, then the rest part can be affected. So one example is when I trying to uh, use a library so called uh, protobuf.js to pass the uh, protobuf file. And there's one uh, message inside there are some uh, fields. Every field got a meaningful trading comma. And then uh, something is uh, missed somewhere. And then all the, co all the comments are shifted to the wrong place. Yeah. And this bug, brings me to JRD. So this handsome guy created this uh, early parser in 1968. It's a context-free parser. So the context free here, you can uh, simply understand it as um, like put a term, uh, no matter where you put a term, this term, uh, the meaning of this term will not change. So, it can also be replaced by some other term or, uh, or strings. So a simple example is like our programming language. Uh, obviously our human language like English, Chinese are uh, not context-free because it, every word uh, will depend on the uh, context to understand the meaning, right? And then uh, why is it special is because it can parse any language. It basically can parse any language. And uh, it's just similar to the error parser. It do pass left to right, top to down. And the performance is quite okay, I would say. So the worst case, it will take a big time. And the best case, only, only linear time. Yeah. And it's not complicated. So Basically, it takes in a grammar less defined by a user and run the dynamic programming to process this uh, grammar. 
So the grammar list looks like this. It's similar to our uh, arrow function, right? And it does a similar thing as well. So on the left of the arrow, we have some symbols. Uh, these are able to be expanded or be replaced by the uh, symbols and strings on the right side. So we are uh, so we call it uh, non terminal. And then on the right side, you can see some strings and the regular expression, right? So these are not able to be expanded to other symbols. So we are called uh, we call it terminals. And then we will use dynamic programming. Um, so uh, we often de demonstrate the dynamic programming process with a proper chart. So if let's say if you are passing one plus two, right, then the chart will look like this. So we have four columns, four columns, and the four columns are stated by the progress of the passing. And the progress is uh, represented by a red dot here, like a cursor. And each column, each column is a set of states. So the state is like this. It contains three parts, three parts. So the first part is the grammar. Second part is uh, the progress of uh, this rules matching. So it's represented by a red dot as well. And third part is the uh, index, index of the column where this rule started to match. All right. And then we use uh, three operations on these uh, states to fill in this chart, which is scan, predict, and complete. So if you see such kind of state that on the right of the dot is a terminal, right? Then it will run scanner. So scanner will compare this terminal uh, to the next element it wants to pass. And if it matches, it will add this state to the next column and move the dot one position behind. And if you see on the right of the dot is a non-terminal, then it will run a predictor predictor. So predictor will go back to the grammar list and searching for uh, the rules uh, for S. So we find two rules here. Um, predictor will add these rules to S0 like this. And when it add this uh, state, it will put the dot at the, at the beginning and set the starting index same as the current uh, column index, which is zero here. All right, so if you see uh, a state has finished parsing, so the dot is at the end of this rule, right? So it finished parsing. Then in this case, it will run computer instead. So computer will go back to uh, the column where it started to match, which is S0 here. And searching for the state having S on the right of the dot. So it find two rules, two states actually, and computer will add them to the S3 column at like least. And same as before, we move uh, the dot one position behind. Okay, so this is it. So we can start with a, a simple uh, example. This example actually I found on the Wikipedia. So you can find the uh, chart on the Wikipedia as well. So we are going to pass two plus three uh, multiplies four with this list of grammar have uh, six rules. All right, so the first thing we do is to uh, put the starting grammar, which is P by iOS often on the first of the grammar list. To my, uh, to my first column is zero. And uh, when we put it, we, was, uh, we, we can start to looping these uh, states, within these states. And we will see the first rule, uh, P right arrow S here, uh, on the right of the dot is a S, it's a non-terminal, right? 
then as I say, and when you see a non-terminal, it will run predictor. So predictor will go back to the grammar nest and searching for the rules for this non-terminal. So it find two rules, add them to the S0 column, add two rules, and then it's dropped down here. So it move on to the next state, next state. And next state, I see uh, on the right of the dot is still S, it's a uh, non-terminal. So by right, it's still run the predictor, uh, but uh, uh, S I have already predicted, so it will just get duplicated result. And since I said the column should be a set structure, so it's uh, not allowing to have the duplicated state. And uh, so, so we just uh, skip here and move on to the next, uh, next state. Uh, so we do the same thing until the last one. The last one, this time, we see that on the right of the dot become a regular expression for string. And it's, not, uh, it's, term, uh, it's terminal, right? Then see the terminal, we will run the scanner. So scanner will compare uh, whether my next element matches to uh, this terminal. So my next element is actually two, two. So it matches to uh, one, one, two, four. So scanner will add this rule to my next column and move the uh, cursor, uh, move the dot one position behind. And this column finish because there's no more states found here. So it move on to uh, the next column. And next column, this time, we see that uh, the dot is on the end of the rule. So it's finished passing. Then it will run completer. So completer will go back to where it started to match. And we found it started to match from uh, S0. So he go back to S0 and find uh, whether there is a state uh, that uh, have been T on the right of the dot. And we find this one, this one. So the computer will add it to the S1 column and move the dot one position behind. Right. So keep on doing this and until all the columns are, are filled. So this is the complete column, uh, complete chart. So if you are interested, you can uh, see the details uh, after this talk. Um, and then here is the uh, shortened version uh, Suju code. So as I say, first you will need to uh, initialize the columns and add the uh, initial, uh, initial state into the first column. And then it will run two loops, two loops. First loop is the column. First loop is the column. And second loop is the state in the column. And for each state, it will check whether it finished passing. So if it finished passing, it will run the computer. And if it's not, then it will check uh, whether on the right of the dot is a terminal or non-terminal. So if it's a terminal, then it will run scanner. If it's a not terminal, it will run predictor. But quite straightforward. So is it finished? Yes, finish. But um, I have a question. Where is the AST? <laughs> right. So as I said, um, a parser should produce a proper grammar tree like the AST uh, at the first few slides, but where is the AST? Um, now I only have a chart with full of uh, information, but I don't know how to use it. So there's a very interesting story here uh, because uh, Jake Early actually didn't, uh, didn't clarify these parts in his uh, paper and it caused some very interesting discussion on the history. Uh, but luckily I find a solution. I found a solution from a, a JavaScript implementation. It's called uh, Nearly Jazz. Nearly Jazz. If you're interested, can check it out. They have a very nice uh, website. So how it did this is um, 
like uh, like this way. So uh, you see, this is the last column I have, uh, and for this column, you can check uh, from top, uh, from bottom to top, find the last one, uh, find the first one that has a uh, finished parsing which I find P right arrow, uh, right arrow S as well. And uh, then we use this state as a starting point, starting point. So we follow the red and the gray arrows I draw, basically it represents the operations I did. Uh, and the state change, uh, yeah. And we uh, follow these arrows and we find out all the completions, the completions. And then we will get this, uh, this chart. So you can see uh, the ones with the yellow background is uh, the completions, the completions. And the one with the gray arrow, uh, gray background is the um, previous states of these uh, yellow background ones. And then if you uh, merge them together, uh, with the order of up, bottom to up, then you can see such kind of uh, grammar tree, grammar tree. So we can uh, verify a little bit, verify a little bit. So the first one we see is T by arrow S, right? And then here we see the red arrow is, uh, is complete. Uh, it's quite small though, it's a completion. And the completion is uh, started from this, uh, S right arrow, S plus N. And then uh, we can only see a completion for the N symbol, N symbol. There's no completion for the S symbol. So the S symbol, I have to uh, go back to its previous uh, states. So we follow the gray arrow, follow here, and we find in S2, it, com it comes from the S2. Uh, this is the previous state, but here we still don't, doesn't have any clue of uh, where S is completed from. So we still follow the arrow. This arrow is scanner, scanner. And we follow this arrow going back here. And then we find there's a completion for S, which comes from this S right arrow M. And same applies to this M here. It's completed by M right arrow T, and T is completed by the one, two, four. So we get this uh, kind of uh, grammar tree. Grammar tree. Uh, to verify this, I have a little uh, demo. Uh, so this is the nearly jazz. So, uh, I input this uh, grammar less here, and um, nearly just can uh, use this tool called nearly C to compile compile this file into a JavaScript into a JavaScript. And after you compile, you can get this kind of JavaScript. It basically turns uh, this uh, grammar into a, a object, a JSON, and and then with this file, nearly just can do a uh, testing with it. So I say my grandma to grandma yes, and I input two plus three, multi plus four, and here it turn, uh, it will lock out the whole chart uh, just same as the chart as I showed. Uh, and then here is the passing result. So the default passing result is quite ugly, la, quite ugly with all the array type. But uh, we can improve this by uh, giving a grammar a proper uh, post, uh, post processor. So here is the post processors. It can accept the function and the return, uh, return the result I want to pass into. So if I, so same as before, I will need to compile it to a JavaScript first. 
And then I will need to, uh, I can run this by changing to my big one to AST, sorry. And yeah, so here I get a AST. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so this is it. And on the right side is um, some materials I uh, read for this early passer. Um, hope you enjoy my talk. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you, Jenny. Um, I think uh, we don't actually have questions um, from the public, but I think there were a lot of uh, uh, sharings on, on other, um, uh, other things that you can look at. Um, I think one of it was um, uh, Selway uh, shared about um, for contexted parsing, there is another better way. Um, you could use parsing expression grammar. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure what is that. Um, do, you know, do you know about that? No, parsing no, no. I'm expression pretty, grammar. No, I'm pretty new to uh, parser as well. Ah, uh, okay. Um, there's also another one um, uh, shared by Sean. Um, it's by the author. Um, first name is uh, Ivan. The last name I can't pronounce it. Um, uh, so he shared something about Elm. Like is that? Hmm, I'm not exactly sure what is uh what what's what's the paper. Um, yeah, but I kind of like reference Elm. So kind of interesting. So did that paper kind of like inspired Elm or he created? Oh. Mm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So I, I see that uh, there are still more um couple of uh, algorithms that, that you mentioned there. Um like what is uh what's MAPA algorithm, for instance? Oh, okay. Uh so uh it's very interesting that uh, uh early parser actually there is uh, some caveats and uh, the performance is not that good consider. So uh, it all depends on uh, how you write the grammar. So if you didn't write your grammar uh, properly, it's likely to cause uh, a lot of execution time, right? So um, this guy, Jeffrey uh, Kater, uh, it, he writes so-called uh, MAPA algorithm. Actually, it's, um, I would say it's not being new. It's just a uh, uh, new, like a new tool, but written in Perl, Perl I guess. Um, and it's combining some other guys' uh, research results to how to improve the early passer. Yeah. And the end result is quite a thing. It can almost uh, improve like 50% uh, uh, of time. Yeah, I, uh, the way it used is like, uh, first you will, consider uh, to pre-compile the, uh, the rules to a proper way, like removing some uh, not useful, not useful rules in the calculation. Yeah. And another thing is uh, they need to uh, take care of nullable, nullable symbols, nullable uh, grammars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, so th this is the MAPA algorithm I know because uh, I don't know Pro, so I didn't go into uh, the source code. So um, uh, for early, I, I see that uh, you have shared like nearly, uh, nearly JS. Uh, it's something that's written in, in JavaScript. Um, yeah. uh, it's, so, so it's something that uh, I kind of like think of, uh, is, is performance an issue for parsers? Yeah, like uh, our processes are generally uh, uh, computational heavy because um, I, I don't really know much about uh, parsers and, and what they actually um, calculate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't compare this. A uh, lot of uh, lot of parsers and uh, algorithms, I think, oh, I think I may not have the link here, but there was one guy writing a very good blog to talk about the uh, parsers and uh, all the algorithms existing for the parsers. Uh, there's a lot, and uh, uh, I'm not sure 
uh, whether there's comparison of them. Um, for oh, we have a question from uh, from the floor. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, Sharon has a question. Uh, you have mentioned that you are new to Parsis too. Um, she thanks you for the explanation. Um, she has a question on um, what do you use Parsis for? Uh, okay. So um, actually, per personally, I didn't like uh, uh, like writing Parsis yet. Uh, but I will, I, I use parsers. I think all of you guys use parsers, uh, which is uh, Babel, right? So everyone use Babel. Babel actually pass your JavaScript into uh, ASD and uh, do some uh, modification of your source code based on the ASD structure. Yeah, so what, what your, uh, basically what your loader or your plugin do is uh, like changing the ASD structure. And um, that means everyone is using parser actually, right? Correct, correct. Hmm. So um, what about the use case of, uh, of early or like say, um, what's the difference between early and, and other, in, in terms of like category, um, early and other process? Mm. Okay, so I think the major difference is uh, like what I said, the uh, typical uh, major parsers uh, we use is often like uh, highly coupling the code with uh, uh, highly coupling your grammar with the code. So what I think the biggest difference of early parser is uh, it lets you forgot about how to write code to uh, check these uh, grammars. So your only focus is on how to write the grammar, how to write the grammar. Yeah. And the code is pretty short, pretty short. So I think the only thing can go wrong is probably with your grammar, is not with your code. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think that's all for the questions. Uh, oh, the question from Kawe. Um, do you know what parser to be able to use? Sorry? A last minute question. Uh, do you know which parser that uh, did Babel use? Uh, I'm not really sure. Eh? I, I guess it's uh, also a, some kind of our parser. I didn't look into it. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe, maybe Li Hao has an answer. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. You, you, <laughs> ask, you are asking the wrong person. <laughs> all right so I, I think that's all for um today uh thank you jenny again for sharing with us on um how parts uh, how how a specific parser uh like this work um and thank you guys for joining in uh for tuning in um so yeah i think that's all for today um and thank you for joining us all right see you next thank week. you bye bye